What's up, humans? Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing the world of dance. So how I got into dance, what dance is about, what it means to people, um, how they contribute to the arts and everything of the like. How does dance make you feel when you're watching it? How does dance make you feel when you're doing it? And what do the arts do for our community? Dance has been expressed since the ancient times of Egyptian cave paintings and people would do it during festivals and it's always been a form of entertainment or oftentimes religious ceremony. Belly dancing is one of the oldest forms of dance and it's always been a form of self-expression. It is a physical release. It is a way to communicate and even communication with animals. Often dance was a way of courting for their mates, right? So you've got animals that will huddle together and and they breathe together, right? And some birds that will do full-on dance routines. They'll try to do like 15 different movements in competition with other male birds to win the female bird over, right? And then you've got like cottontail rabbits that will cavort and they'll start like running or hopping or fighting one another right to show like their athletics and that they're healthy and they're strong and they're good to mate with um and then like swans courtship are like a dance right and that's kind of like where we get our swan lake from so like before a dance at a fancy ball type of a thing like they bow to one another and they do like these synchronized swims and head bobs and and the trumpeter swans actually will blow in the water and sing during that courtship time, which I think is super cool. And then I thought it was super interesting. I had read that when approaching a black widow, which is larger than the males, so they are scary, obviously. The black widow gets its name for a reason. But the guy will, like, step onto the web and gyrate. Like, they will, like, shake it to be like, yo, I'm here. I'm not, I'm not a predator. I'm just trying to get it on with you right so he like vibrates like I, it's technically the abdomen area but like you know it looks like he's twerking up there and you know and then slowly he advances you know and then there's like different patterns of how they do their shaking right so then that way she can decide if yes I would like to be with this mate I enjoy his gyrating <laughs> so it's like percussion kind of like through the webs which I just think is pretty cool um, and then there's actually like a lot of hermaphrodite uh, animals, a lot of like snails and sea slugs. Um, you know, the male seahorse carries the babies. It's like, what? Like, what? what is this? Like, I literally want someone to like buy me a seahorse. Like, since I've been going through my infertility, I just think it's a funny thing. I'm like, yeah, like, why can't we figured this out yet, right? Like, why can't we get the dudes to carry this and have all the baby issues? <laughs> like, so I kind of want a seahorse necklace to, like, represent that, like, men are should be just as, as involved, right? And then another sea creature that I thought was interesting is the pufferfish, or more commonly known as the blowfish. And so I guess divers had discovered, like, these kind of like crop circles, but, like, in the sand in the ocean – and they found a species of puffer fish that when they go to mate, they make these really cool, like perfect circles on the bottom of the seafloor. And then they put like little, it's like they decorate them with like little shell fragments and like sediment and stuff. And then after the interested females are fertilized, they lay their eggs in the nest at the center of it, right? So like, I just think nature is so beautiful and so perfect in its own ways and you know sometimes I feel like we don't pay enough attention to the animals like we could probably learn a lot from them and like what they're doing um, and apply that to our our regular lives I mean they have their it's mostly instinctual and I know that we don't give you know a lot of animals like we say like they don't have as many emotions as we do but that doesn't mean what they're doing is any less insignificant um, and I, I think we just don't fully understand w how they transfer their meaning and their purpose and their emotions 
And I think that's why I was so fascinated with elephants when I was in the circus and just my like empathic ways because elephants have one of the highest emotional intelligences of any animal. Uh, dolphins do, dogs, chimpanzees. Um, so, you know, we do learn. We do learn from these animals. Uh, but one of the coolest dancers of them all, uh, which, which is completely requisite to our survival or necessary, um, is bees, right? So like honeybees and, and have pollinating bees. So they communicate their flower location. So they use like um, special dances uh, inside of the hive and one bee will dance. And then the others like watch and learn, like they're learning from a choreographer. Um, and then that gives them directions to a specific flower patch, which I imagine this much must literally be like left, right, left, right, straight forward. This, it must be like Morse code, but through bee vibrations and dancing, it's crazy. I don't, I, I mean, that just blows my mind. Um, and then it makes you just think like, what, how, how do they do that? Like, there's just so much different kinds of intelligence that like we can truly appreciate uh, when learning about these amazing creatures. And then they share their nectar and then they sniff it out and go find the flower. A lot like a dog does. If you give it a scent, it'll follow the scent kind of a thing. Um, so yes, lots of dancing in nature, with which I think is super cool. Um, but just because I recently talked about uh, empathy and feeling emotions, um, dance is the way a lot of the times that I get a lot of frustration or stress or sadness out of my body. And I remember, I mean, luckily I have the tools because I was technically trained. So I was trained at a studio in Kissimmee, Florida uh, called JDC or James Dance Center, uh, which is no longer. And I had a wonderful um, a dance teacher named Judy James and she was the owner. She uh, recently passed, but um, wonderful woman. I mean, she was the epitome of like, she's the ballerina that you always wanted to be. Like, she just looked like a ballerina. Like, she looked like a living swan. You were just like, oh my gosh, like, just beautiful, just beautiful woman, kind woman. And I started at a young age. I started at the age of three uh, doing acrobatics, and then I moved into tap and ballet and you always have to take ballet because that's the foundation of dance and jazz and when you're young typically you don't really like ballet but as you get older you just really start appreciating it because once you have those foundational steps and that technique then then the sky is the limit then it's like you've got that foundation and your body can learn other types of, of dance and movement and I've always just appreciated that I now have that like forever so if I'm feeling in a bad mood it's not like I don't know where I'm going when I'm starting my movement and I feel like that's the fear in a lot of people who are not trained they're afraid to get out there and move because they're like well I don't know where to start I don't know the first thing, what it, it might, does this look weird? Which this is the great thing about dance in general. It it doesn't really matter if it feels good to you and it feels good in your body. Go for it. Like it it really doesn't matter. Um, dance can be so many different things and it is it, it's expressed in so many different ways. And even watching these wonderful TV shows that are out right now, man, dance has changed from when I was taking. And I'm like, wow, like I didn't learn any of these types of moves. And of course, a lot of dance studios um, growing up, like if you had a boy in your class, oh, you're lucky. You got to learn some like partnering skills. Like a lot of dance studios are very girl heavy. And, you know, in society, it's, it's tough. Like people weren't pushing for boys to be in dance and I feel like we're 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 going there we're getting there we're being more open-minded about boys being in, in dance classes where I feel like in younger years guys were kind of afraid and guys really did get bullied and picked on and if you were strong enough to handle it you stayed with it but if you weren't you're like well I guess I'll just go do soccer or football or you know, succumb to the societal societal norm of what everybody else wants me to be, you know, and, and that's tough. And I think it's so ridiculous. Like, yes, can you be gay and dance? Of course. Sure. Whatever. And, you know, do some boys pre present themselves a little bit more effeminate? Sure. But there is nothing sexier than a straight male dancer performing like a 
straight male dancer. Like, it's super sexy. So I don't know where this came up. I mean, what what about Gene Kelly? Gene Kelly was super sexy, and he was a dancer. And, like, he had smooth moves and had technique in ballet and all this training. But the way he performed it, super sexy. Bob Fosse, same thing. Completely different. Way sexy, right? He, like, really pushed the envelope with the way that he manipulated his movements and, and worked with his dancers. And super sexy. I mean, everybody loved Bob Fosse, right? Um, and I just think it's so strange that, you know, people – and I blame adults at parenting that people are like, oh, well, I don't know if I want to put my son in dance because maybe he'll he'll end up being gay. I'm like, I hate to tell you, but if your kid is going to be gay, they're going to be gay. And I don't really want to get too much into it in this wonderful month of June where we are celebrating um, the gay community, LGBTQ, and just, you know, it, with the Pulse anniversary and, and everything like that. And it's just... It still blows my mind that people think it's just a societal choice. Um, we can be influenced a lot of ways in life, but I highly doubt that like influences um, like these types of things are become permanent just because they had an experience. I mean, I know plenty of people who've had experiences in college and then they moved on into whatever you know they liked, if they liked boys or girls or whatever. So it, it just blows my mind that people – don't you know really think that they're born that way and I'm like well I mean and, and who cares even if they're not right what who cares so what a, if they it's the same thing as you know it's like you grow up to be a police officer you grow up to be a performer you grow up to be a nurse you grow up to be you know whatever it's like let people grow up to be whatever they want to be I don't get why people feel like they need to dictate what someone is going to be like you got to let them go and you got to let them figure out who they're going to be. Like I, I, the control thing is weird to me that anyone thinks they can fully control another human being. At the end of the day, they're becoming their fully formed selves and their fully formed human beings. And <laughs> I just don't get how people think that they can just, you know, control that or, or just sit aside and judge it. Who cares? Go live your life and do what you want to do. OK, like stop worrying about it. And, and I think there's this lack of internal love for oneself that they feel like they need to dictate how someone else is living their lives. If you love yourself and you love others, this shouldn't bother you so much that you are making it your daily mission to worry about what someone else's preferences are in their lives. It just blows my mind. So getting back to dance. Um, so I love dance. It's a, it's a way to express. It's a huge thing in the arts community. Um, I literally, when I was going through a lot of my infertility things and I've been struggling with bouts of depression, um, I just like choreographed a solo. Like I was just in my living room and I had taught like a dance class online because I do that sometimes. And I was like, I'm going to choreograph something. And I, I picked a song that was speaking to me and just found a way to not only listen to the song and hear it for what it was and appreciate the music, but then let my body kind of express those words through, you know, through that song. And it just made me feel better. Like, and you know, I, I feel like we forget that we have this tool right in front of us. It's connected to us and we need because the answer is inside of us. I think it's always there. So we're always searching for someone else to fix our problem sometimes, which is kind of the outlet of social media. Like, oh, if I just write something on social media, it's going to make me feel better. Um, and, and it's fine. It's fine to reach out for help. But sometimes we forget we have these things inside of us. And if we tap into that, you know, play some music, move your body, dance, get out in nature, sing a song at the top of your lungs, even if you're tone deaf, just do it. It's going to make you feel better. And, and it's proven, you know, in nature, it's proven all around us that these things can can produce um, the love and uh, good feels and serotonin levels and all of that that we need, right? So use your literal resource that you're walking around with every single day and, and, and try to find that part of you um, that can release those wonderful endorphins that you totally 
desperately need on a daily basis. And your cocktail of the day is the Passion Dance. 1.5 ounces of silver tequila, almond syrup to taste, 0.5 ounces of lime juice, 2 ounces of orange juice, 1.5 ounces passion fruit, over crushed ice. Stir and serve. Enjoy. Now, I don't go out as much as I used to. This girl used to know how to get down. And I'm telling you, when the other kids were out smoking pot in circles and going to the local fair, like literally like the Orlando fairgrounds, um, and doing bad things, you know, drinking underage and all that stuff, I was going out to City Walks the Grove and House of Blues Teen Nights, and I was mingling. I mean, I guess you can look at that as like kind of being bad, but you know, I was figuring out my womanhood and I just loved dancing. I loved dancing with my girlfriends. I loved dancing with the boys. And it was, that's how you socialized. And I feel like people don't do that today. I had asked um, some of the, my students that I teach, and I'm like, do you guys like go to places? They're like, no, we'll go to like people's houses and stuff like that. I'm like, they don't do this anymore. And I mean, maybe it's because people did get in, themselves into trouble. I have no idea. But man, was that such a great uh, release as a young teenager, just going out and, and dancing. And you, you really do get to um, understand um, a person's personality and um, their confidence and their talents uh, when you mingle in this way. Uh, and I, I love partnering. And what am I going to do? Like at, you know, like at a dance studio, like I said, if you don't have as many boys, you don't get to do that. So when I was young or even when I was you know, older, uh, when I, you know, hit my mid twenties and I could go have a cocktail and drink with friends. I just, I liked going to the salsa clubs. Um, there was another place at city walk that we used to go to. And if you did know some guys, you invited them and you'd partner dance and do a little bit of like ballroom and swing style dancing. And, you know, I just don't feel like there's as much of that anymore. And it was so much fun and good workout. And that was like what you knew was going to happen when you went out. And I just don't feel like there's as much of that anymore. And I I really enjoyed it. And um, I I wish it would come back. I I wish Atlantic Dance Hall at Disney Boardwalk would come back with big band music and swing nights. And that would just be something I, if it was me, I'd be doing that every weekend. I also feel like dance makes everything look better. Like, I know a lot of people like to go watch concerts and listen to their favorite singer I always struggle with concerts because I'm like, if they're just going to stand there, then I'll just listen to their album or watch their more edited creative music video that they posted. Um, I remember I went to a Drake concert on a crazy date. I'll have to talk about my crazy date life that I've had um, in Texas and Houston. And he just sat on a rock and then walked back and forth on the stage And there was lasers. Like, the lasers looked really cool. But I'm like, I mean, if he had some backup dancers, (laughs) this show would be much better. You know, that's why people loved watching the boy bands and Britney Spears and Christina and Rihanna. And, you know, when you have backup dancers and Beyonce, it just it makes everything look better. And that's not to take away that the singer is absolutely incredible and you love them. But even Lady Gaga has found ways. I mean, you know, she plays piano and she's very talented in in those other ways. But, you know, she not only has the backup dancers, but she'll always make something extremely themed, even if it is just her. So then she makes it more interesting. So I guess I'm just kind of challenging, you know, to make things more interesting if you are not going to use dancers. But dancers need jobs. So hire us, right? Especially us shorties over here. Um, So I'm only five foot one and... I am a dance teacher. I have been teaching technically since I was 18 years old. Um, I started choreographing when I was 16 and, um, you know, uh, did a a choreographed a duet for a competition that I did uh, when I was younger. And um, I remember they ended up giving the choreographer award to 
a big group number, but then all of the judges came up to me and they were like, we were on the fence with this. It was not unanimous. We really wanted you to win it. And in my heart, I won it. I was like, thank you. I appreciate that. Like the fact that you came up to me after the competition and said that to me, you know, and that was really what changed everything for me. I was like, I want to be a choreographer. Like, I love it. And something that's cool about the way that my brain works, um, and I love being behind the table. I love the creative side of things is when I hear a song, and especially if a song is done well, production-wise, all of it, I can picture an entire number just from listening to the song once. Like, that's how my brain works. I can just see it. I can see it. And of course, you get more detailed as you finally pick apart and start choreographing things, but that's literally how my brain works. I can just see it in my head like it's a dream, like a daydream. And then just, I'm like, let's get up. you know. And that's what has made me over the years get so much better at choreographing on the spot because I can just listen to the song. I see it in my head. I'm like, okay, let's go. You know, let's get a, let's get on our feet and let's put this together. Um, and I am in the middle of doing a lot of dance camps for the summer right now and, and teaching online classes. And, and I just, I love it. It really um, is a fantastic outlet for me uh, personally. And that's what I think dance does for people. And as I'm teaching, um, you know, I am the adult and we also need to instill positive reinforcement on our youth and I remember teaching um, at, at Disney uh, I no longer teach there I'm, I'm hoping to be invited back but I taught at Disney and I had this group of girls from Brazil and I was just shortly I like to talk to the kids before and after that it's not just a dance class it's an, an experience and I want to tell them about my background as well and my you know wonderful swan ballet teacher that I grew up with I remember she so much wanted me to be this ballerina because she knew I loved dance and I just never had the body for it. I had a gymnast like body. My breasts are large. I have a C cup and I just didn't really have the figure for it. And my hips were more turned in than turned out. I was flexible, still am flexible, but I struggled. I really struggled. I'm like, okay. And I remember her coming over to me and she's like, just you got this. And I'd hold my leg up and she's like, now let go. And I'd let go. And my leg would just drop right back down to 90 degrees. And I just looked at her and I was like, it's okay. I was like, my body won't do it. I'm like, it's really okay. Like I can try and try and try and try. And I'm like, but I just can't tilt and have my leg go there. I can whack it there. But you know, I just didn't have the hips for it. And I remember when I, I had to quit point and it was mostly a money thing. We really couldn't afford dance is very expensive. And <laughs> I can't believe like now that I am an adult, it's like I always am like so thankful for my mother for everything she did. You know, uh, we went through a lot of struggles growing up and we would drive 45 minutes to an hour to dance class every day in the heat with no air conditioning, eating out of ice, eating ice out of cups and just being miserable and sitting in Florida traffic. And this just sacrifices that, you know, she made for me to be able to take my dance classes. But we couldn't afford the point shoes are very expensive. And I really liked point because I was strong enough to do point and I was a good turner. Um, and I really enjoyed it. But at the end of the day, like I said, I never had the ballerina body. And even though I could have let that discourage me and think I will never have a future. And I'd look at all these other ballerinas who are going to their conservatories. And I was like, well, I'm never going to get accepted into one of those. I started taking hip hop and I, we didn't have hip hop at our dance studio back then. Sometimes we do like some jazz funky stuff, but it, not necessarily hip hop. And so I started taking classes and just getting better and better and better. And I just remember, you know, people saying, actually, there's a lot of celebrity singers that are short and they prefer short backup dancers. So my goal was, you know, I wanted to be like a, a backup dancer for a famous pop star or be the famous pop star because I always wanted to be famous. Quick little side story. So do you guys remember TRL? Of course you do. Some of you do. Um, I remember like running home from school, told a request live was going to start at 3 p.m. And then I was going to see like what the number one video of the day was. And I remember being like, oh, I got to watch the video because we didn't have the, you know, the Internet, not like we know it today, where you could just go on your phone and like pull up the ne the newest music video. Um, we just had like AOL Messenger and whatnot. And, you know, nothing fancy yet. And I wanted to like memorize the Britney Spears moves and like, you know, try to memorize Hit Me Baby and Crazy and all this stuff. And this day there was a new artist and she was kind of like a Avril Lavigne style type girl. And she didn't really last. But in the moment, she was like 
the number one new artist, and her name was Katie Rose. And I went to my room and I cried for like an hour. I was like, I'll never be famous. <laughs> like, just devastated. Like, ah, oh, my career is over, you know. And I did um, audition to backup dance for Aaron Carter. Um, and then I missed the callback because I ended up joining the circus. And I remember that being a crossroads in my life, being like, do I join the Aaron Carter tour or join the circus? Like, I always wonder, like, in those crossroads in my life, like, if I had gone this way, who would I be with? Or, you know, in my life, like, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting to, you know, wonder where, where you would end up. Um, but we could do that all, all day, all night. But anyways, so I wasn't the ballerina that I wanted to be. I didn't end up dancing for anybody famous. I did dance for a local uh, guy, very usher type, and I, I was his backup dancer for a few, like, high school like little shows and stuff like that, but uh, didn't make it out to LA. It's always been a money thing. I, you know, if you are fortunate and you've got parents that can get you there, God bless you. God bless you. Um, but you know, I, I worked locally and and did all the local things that I could do, and um, you know, still life has been been wonderful. But I always instill in my students that there is a stage for everyone. Find your stage. You know, I was short, and I was like, all right, I'm short. What can I do about this? And I played kids. I played short characters. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, carpe diem, and I'm going to seize the day on what I can do as a short person. And I, you know, spent most of my career playing short characters and, you know, young-looking kid-type characters, and it's been great. You know, I was Tinkerbell. Like, do it. Like, do what you can do. And I do feel bad. I, I, I always said if I had the authority at some point in the future that I would cast short dancers in a show and you know because everything and I know it comes down to like money and oh we already made the costumes for girls that are between five three and five seven okay I get it you know whatever like I'm never going to be a rocket like I totally get it um but I don't want that to discourage people there is a stage for everybody and also to continue honing in on your craft you know I thought oh, I'll be fine with just dance. And then I'm like, no, I want to do theater. I want to sing. I, I want to do all this other stuff too. So, and I want to I want to do film. So like just put yourself out there, take the classes that you need to get um, to make yourself a better performer if that's what you love to do. And don't second guess. Go find your stage. Go audition for the things that you may not have thought you were right for because a lot of times a casting director might see you for something else that you didn't even know was an option. So just go out. And plus, auditioning is great practice anyways. And now it's time for The Twist. To distort or misrepresent the meaning of an unexpected development of events. Let's see what's stirring and who's shaking things up. Have you heard about what's going on with Matthew Morrison? Now, he was the teacher on Glee. He did the live action of The Grinch, and he is a fantastic performer. He's been in theater his whole life, uh, and he was selected to be a judge on So You Think You Can Dance. Now, you can believe what you want to believe, but I always believe in going to the horse's mouth. This is just something I've learned in life rather than just like hearing it from, you know, two, three, four people and going around and getting these different versions of it, like go to what the horse's mouth is saying. And then if you still don't believe what they're saying, that's just on you. And you can just live your life dealing with the, you know, shittier side of the stick if that's what you want to do, if you want to view life that way. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for this. And he's also married. So I'm, I'm going to throw him a bone here. Um, now, I love the Me Too movement. Um, I think it's done a lot to raise awareness, and I think uh, men are being more responsible and careful. Um, and I think this was just a misstep. And he did go live on, I believe, his Instagram page, and he explained that he had sent a text, which he read out loud. Now, we didn't see it. He didn't show it to us. But he did read what we are supposed to believe to be is the text that he sent to one of the contestants. Now, not being smart about something doesn't mean that you're a bad person, okay? He just didn't think before he left, right? And he just wrote to her asking her for her number 
but not in a sexual way, not in a mischievous way. He just wanted to help her in her career. And they shared um, a mutual respect for a choreographer. And he was going to reach out to the choreographer because he knew her and then help this girl get to work with her in the future. So he was really looking out for her to get her a job in the future. Now, that's also probably not appropriate because then you're being biased and you're um, you know, helping one contestant, but not all the contestants. And from what he said on the previous show that he judged on, you were encouraged to mentor the contestants. And I know that they do this on The Voice, and they do. They help them, and they, they want them to uh, go far after the show is over. And I think he just jumped the gun. It was too soon, and he got excited to help a contestant out. Now, you can think what you want, and you could think, oh, well, you know, really the producers just caught it before it went too far. But whether they did or not, technically he didn't do anything that is wrong. He didn't do anything that is to be shamed for. And I feel bad that anybody is using the word harass and that apparently it was an anonymous person that came forward. If this person is being anonymous, that to me is more of a red flag. I'm like, what... What, what is your motive here that you have to be anonymous in this? If this really happened, then come out and say who you are, you know? Oh, it's easy for you. You don't want to get involved. But now Matthew Morrison has to sit here and deal with the backlash of this situation. So I do feel for him. Um, and then I also just wanted to give praise to uh, Twitch and JoJo. I think they are fantastic at, at their jobs. And I think JoJo is an inspiration um, to the LGBTQ community. And I think she has grown into a mature woman. And I think she's intelligent. And I think that she is making people feel comfortable about who they are and, and just being another spokesperson to show others that they can truly be themselves. And I, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate what she's doing for the community. dance are truly incredible um i can hardly keep up with them and shows like so you think you could dance just show all of the different styles and where they come from like what are teachers teaching all across the world today and as a teacher myself uh i just want to praise teachers uh that are that are dance teachers too i mean you know a lot of people use us as daycare and afternoon care and night care and you know the kids are, are learning from us and we've got your kids for the day and there's so much uh, that that goes into preparing to teach a class and uh, choreographing. There, it's the, really about the prep work, and I, I guess I just wanted to make that awareness for people um, because I, sometimes I do feel people don't get it, and I'm totally fine trying to explain it. But sometimes I do feel that choreographers and uh, dance teachers can be undervalued. Um, a lot of times we do ask, we are asking for high amounts of money because we are spending hours outside of the studio putting these things together um, so that we can have an amazing show um, and, and product for uh, your students. Um, and I also just wanted to say, like I said, when you go to see a show and, and they've, you've got the backup dancers and you see how incredible it is, Remember that. Remember what you're watching as a whole, because oftentimes, especially in our community, the same way that stunt performers and stunt choreographers do not get as many accolades, um, I feel like choreographers uh, don't get as much attention as a director. So especially with the musicals, a director will be far more well-known than the choreographer, and a lot of times the choreographer is absolutely necessary for the strength and for the success of a show um and and they do have the vision that sometimes a director doesn't have um and it's a t it is a team effort it is a team effort um but i i feel like we we fail to ag acknowledge them as much as we do with directors in film and with musicals and i just kind of wanted to give a shout out to choreographers and to the directors that know this and are willing to express that rather than just 
you know, taking the compliments that sometimes the choreographers don't get. And I, you know, I've worked with plenty of directors that will be like, no, it, it was Katie. She's, you know, she did most of this, you know, and they'll, they'll point at me and I'm, thank you. Thank you for saying something. Um, because, you know, it, it's not just the dancing. A lot of times choreographers will um, work side by side with the director and they'll come up with just as many blocking and, and moments and ideas throughout the show. Um, and, and they really do deserve the uh love and attention that everybody else gets um you know just alongside with the the performers and for me um lately it's been very emotional for me to teach uh with my infertility journey I'm around kids and I want them <laughs> and I get to meet the parents and I will go up to the parents and I will say you've you've really got a, a wonderful daughter or son and they did so great in this one part and I'll be specific because I want people to know I don't want it just to be a, a general co uh, compliment I want them to know like your child was a leader during this process your child was focused I would love to work with them anytime in the future um, man their vocals were so strong uh, their personality really came through during this process um, and just what a joy it can be to work with kids and I did a production of Mamma Mia for a high school and I was just bawling. It was just amazing to see the whole thing to come together, to see them, you know, come into their own. And I just thought, wow, that's, that's what it's all about. And a lot of times parents will drop their kids off. They don't see all the hard work that they're putting into it because I'm telling you, I'm so tired of society being like, oh, all you do is perform and, you know, oh, it's just fun. Yeah, it is fun. Like once you know the show, but it's still really hard work. You know, they're up there making it look easy and it's hours and hours and hours of comedic timing and, you know, technique and repetition and just so, so much work and mental work goes into it as well. You know, um, and yes, at the end of the day, it is it can feel just so wonderful and it is a fun, fun job because it's ever changing and you're constantly doing new shows and different shows. But it is a lot of work. And if we could have less not for profits and more uh, places that were able to sustainably uh, pay their performers uh, what they deserve to be paid and it was acknowledged as a real job um that's the future that i want that's what i want for our performers um is to find a way that when we go to school and we get a degree a bachelor's degree um that it is just as respected as other fields that went to school for their craft and for uh, we call ours our craft but for what they do and i just i really do wish it was more respected because it is you know the people that when they go out they say, I'm going to take my wife to a movie to watch who? Performers. I'm going to go out to a super fancy dinner where there's live music. I'm going to take them to a concert that you can afford to go to. You know, performers do this stuff and then they can't even afford to go see their favorite celebrities. It's something that needs to change for sure in our society. And just don't forget those things that bring you joy because without the arts, without music, without dance, without all these wonderful things, I, I really truly believe it would be a sadder world that we live in. And especially during the pandemic, we saw how long it took for our craft and our art form to come back while everybody else went back to work and they were able to just wear a mask or social distance. We weren't allowed to do that. You know, there's a lot of shows where you have to hold hands and kiss one another and we're in very close quarters and it was devastating. It was devastating to not be able to get out there and also perform for those of you who are not performers. And I hope that we can appreciate and respect the field of work. Um, but I love dancing. It is something that, um, you know, I always thought, oh, I might give it up. But I think you can just transfer. You know, I, I kind of had to stop doing um, acrobatics because I was like, body is probably I'm gonna hurt myself I'm at an age now where I I don't need to be doing acrobatics for anything and if you didn't know they don't really pay you extra to do that so <laughs> anytime you see somebody in a Broadway show and they're tumbling across the stage they're probably not getting paid extra for that it's just like oh can you do this here's a skill throw it in there you know it is a skill that we pay for right that's our schooling we go to years and years and years and pay for more schooling than than just college, you know, years and years and years of this practice. You know, you don't start learning how to be a doctor when you're six. 
But you can start learning how to be a dancer when you're six. And they're experts in their fields. These dancers, they are experts in their fields. So I think we need to respect the experts that are out there putting on these shows that make it look easy, right? Just like a knee surgeon or a brain surgeon that makes it look easy, you know, um, in a lot of different crafts and in fields of work, of course. Um, but I, you know, and now leaning more into – uh, different styles of dance, like swing dancing and ballroom, something that I know that I can do more socially um, when I'm out. Uh, if I'm on a cruise ship, I could go take a swing class with my husband, you know, things like that, um, and do some ballroom and, and fun things like that. So something that I can still keep doing, um, and you can kind of just transfer. You can transfer those skills, and there's always going to be uh, different areas that you can, that you can grow in. Um, and it's not completely giving up something. It's just shifting a little bit so we can all learn to shift uh and and shift our viewpoints as well on uh what people do and, and appreciate what they do but uh, if you haven't danced lately get out there go find somewhere where you can go out and dance with some friends call somebody up go meet a person have some social time i hope you dance everyone all right humans keep on dancing find your stage find what brings you joy keep the arts alive and Thank you for listening. This has been Katie Rose, served straight up with a twist. It's that time of year where the kids are out of school and the summer camps are in. Does your kid have a lot of energy? Do they need some place to express themselves? More importantly, do they like to dance? Then come check out my summer dance camps and ongoing classes, all done from the comfort of your own home. Join me online at outschool.com. That's O-U-T school.com. And use my referral code for $20 towards your first class. That code is J-P-P-V-P-T-N-H. Again, that's J-P-P-V-P-T-N-H. Search Miss Rose under the art section and let's virtually dance together. Whether it's hip-hop, jazz, or musical theater, I'm teaching routines for all levels to fun tunes from Descendants, Zombies, Moana, Frozen, Encanto, and more. I teach all ages and take date and time requests from parents as well. Enjoy Zooming from your personal dance floor to mine virtually. Hope to see you on the dance floor. Catch my follow-up Fridays on YouTube, where I respond to your YouTube comments on any thoughts or questions relating to each week's episode. It gives you a chance to have a more intimate conversation with me and opens up the door to new topics. Find me at my YouTube channel, Katie Rose Straight Up With A Twist. And remember, if you're thinking it, I'm probably talking about it. This podcast is produced, hosted, and edited by Katie Rose. A Rosebud Production.